Hey bag maker, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me for the show. I see, oh, Naomi is wishing me a happy birthday. Uh, Barbara also, someone must have said something in the comments. Uh, <laughs> I don't have my usual laptop over here. Uh, to watch it while I'm waiting for the show to load up. But thank you so much, everyone, for the birthday wishes. Uh, my birthday is tomorrow, uh, 41 years old. So I'm looking forward to the day, and uh, I really appreciate you uh, tuning in for the show today. So Danny was actually supposed to be on the show today, but um, I was sort of brainstorming earlier today that what would be the show content for tonight, and um, came across... Um, what I thought was a good idea for Bag Lab, except I needed multiple camera angles. And so to do that, he can do it best when he's behind the computer. So um, sort of kicked Danny to the curb for tonight, but um, he'll be back again on a future show. Um, also, Ella emailed me a few days ago with a really great idea. Um, if you watched our Halloween Eve show, I was showing photographs of some of your handmade Halloween costumes and Ella made a suggestion for um, submissions for photos of your handmade ornaments, um, Christmas tree skirts or other something along those similar lines. So if you have something that you'd like to share, um, you can email me a photo. Uh, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Danny's going to put my email address up at the bottom of the screen. Depending on how many photos we get, um, just like what we did with the Halloween costumes, unfortunately I may not be able to um, post all of the photos on the show, but we'll post as many as we can. And again, looking for photos of your handmade ornaments, um, tree skirts. Um, I know I'm well aware there's uh, many other holidays besides Christmas, so it doesn't need to be a Christmas themed sewn item. It can be for um, other religious or other holidays um, around the same time of year. So feel free to include those photos as well. Laura says, we'll miss you, Danny. <laughs> um, what else was I going to let you know about? Oh, while we're talking about ornaments, Danny's going to quickly um, slip over to the overhead camera. I wanted to just share progress on the cross stitch ornament that I'm working on. So this is what it is, it's um, from Satsuma Street. It was a kit that I purchased on Etsy, also available on her website. And I'm almost done. I just have to fill in this little area and then do um, some of the little, the little jewels over here and then the eyes and the beak. So I'm really excited to finish. And I got some other um, ornament kits from Satsuma Street. So I'm going to start in on another one as soon as I finish this one. Um, also, while we're in the overhead camera still, <clears throat> we have a limited number of, my daughter's 14 and she designed these uh, stickers and there, I think there's a magnet in there too, but we're going to slip these in orders um, from this past weekend and until we run out of uh, stickers and or magnets. So Violet designed all of these and she, she loved doing this one of uh, our standard poodle Mikey. So um, again, we're just going to throw these in orders until we run out. Um, what else? Um, we've decided uh, not since this year Christmas Day falls on a Sunday as does New Year's Day. We're um, not going to have Social Sunday for those two days, um, but we still have a few shows left until uh, Christmas Day happens. So just wanted to give um, advance notice on that. Also, um, Shinova, which if you recall, she was my guest um, a few episodes back on Social Sunday. She's going to be teaching the Persimmon Dumpling Pouch at So Magical Expo. Danny's going to put a graphic up on the screen. Um, I've linked to um, the So Magical Expo website in the description in case you're interested in checking it out. And this particular time it will be in Texas. So again, more information is uh, linked to in the description. Uh, Danny's uh, favorite part of the show, um, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. Danny and I are both really grateful that you've tuned into the show. Um, thank you so very much for watching. So 
Um, for this episode of, um, oh, Danny, are you ready? Oh, Sarah, I'm so <laughs> ready. Maybe. Uh, oh, yeah, ready, no. let's do it. <laughs> we are interrupting the show for a special report. Because now it is time for Bag Lab. All right, so for this episode of Bag Lab, Maureen sent me an email request. Um, she said, I have an idea for a Bag Lab segment. I really struggle with sewing and top stitching around curves. Despite many years of sewing experience, it's still something that challenges and frustrates me. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a lot of helpful resources online, so I persevere with it and often draw stitching lines using a fabric marker just to help me out. I've learned to avoid looking at the seam measurement markers on the face plate and try to watch the needle instead, but I find it difficult to maintain the seam allowance doing that. I marvel at how you can zoom around the curves in your videos and your stitching lines look great, but when I try to do that, the fabric doesn't flow as nicely under the presser foot and gets skewed. I sew with a similar machine to yours, only it's a brother semi-industrial. It would be very much appreciated if you would consider this as an option for an upcoming Social Sunday show. So I have, for my discussion today, I have a several methods for um, sewing through curves. Um, I will also just dis briefly discuss top stitching, but I think um, for at least uh, tonight's demonstration, a lot of the discussion will be for just sewing through the curves. Um, one thing, Maureen, if you're not already doing it, um, I would suggest sewing with um, as narrow of a foot as comes with your particular sewing machine, as sometimes a wider foot um, can be a bit more challenging when sewing through the curves. So if you have um, like on my Juki, I have a hinge zipper foot option. I'm actually going to be sewing um, tonight with my foot that I use most of the time, majority of the time. Um, let's see. Okay, so I have um, some step outs prepared and I'm also going to be sewing live, which I don't often sew live. So I guess a little nervous, but I think I remember to turn on the machine. Yep. So normally sewing through the curves and Normally, I just try to keep the sewing machine going the best I can and also um, to sew slowly, just keep it going. I know that's not always possible, but that's over the years how I found that I, I've gotten the best results. Um, normally, I use Wonder Clips. Um, I've got some pins. Danny, could you switch to the actual overhead camera really quick? Just one second. <clears throat> Okay, so here's my, um, I think you have one more zoom option, perhaps a tighter zoom. There you go. Okay, so I've, I've prepared all my samples with what I would assume, what I would expect to sew with. So I've got my lining fabric attached to ShapeFlex interfacing. That's the aqua. The pale blue is attached to foam and all of my um, other demonstration pieces follow the same method. So normally I load up with Wonder Clips I'm using traditional pins um, this time because um, a couple people recommended um, the straight pins for um, avoiding the fabrics from shifting. So while I don't normally sew with the straight pins, I'm going to um, give it a shot today. So I'm going to step over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to sew this first sample, just this half, um, how I normally like to sew uh, curves on my machine. So. Danny's going to swap over to the sewing machine view. And I'm going to be sewing this with uh, a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so as I approach the curve, I'm just going to slow it down. And if possible, I'm just going to keep, keep the machine moving without stopping. Okay, so that's how I would normally sew that. Um, another suggestion for sewing through the curves is to machine baste um, with uh, a smaller seam allowance than is called for in the, that particular step in the pattern. So since I'm working with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna first take a pass with a basting stitch. Um, and a basting stitch on a sewing machine is just a longer stitch length than normal. So. My normal stitch length is two and a half, and I'll just swap that out to, uh, I guess I'll do three and a half for that. 
So I'm gonna go through once with the smaller seam allowance an eighth, just to, I, I realize not every curve is gonna just be two pieces flat against each other. You might have a side panel where everything is not flat, um, but you can use this for both instances. So I'm gonna take one pass with the basting stitch um, using the smaller seam allowance an eighth, and then I'm gonna go back once I'm, I'm assured that everything's um, attached using the eighth, then I'm gonna go back using my regular stitch length and my uh, regular seam allowance. So when you're sewing that first um, eighth, you don't have to be too careful. If you go off the edge of the fabric, no big deal. Just jump right back on there. You just want to make sure everything's sort of uh, more or less um, attached. So now I'm going to switch back to my regular stitch length. And I'm going to sew it again using the quarter. And because you don't have to worry about fabric shifting, you can really take your time and no pins are in the way. Everything's free and clear for you to sew. All right, so first two methods um, for tonight, those are both pretty basic. By the way, <clears throat> while I'm demonstrating these techniques, um, if you have any questions, you can type them in the comments at any time, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Danny is standing by to collect some of your questions and I'll answer them live um, immediately following the demonstrations. All right, so the first two methods, uh, relatively easy, straightforward. Um, the, the third method for sewing a curved edge is a method I've actually talked about in the past, but I thought it would be great to include it in this because it definitely applies to um, sewing through curves, which is using staples. So Danny's going to play this um, video demonstrating how to use staples. Don't worry, the staples don't stay in the finished bag, um, but you'll see in a, in a second just how useful they can be. All right, so I had a question this past week from Beverly and she mentioned let me grab a piece of fabric really quick she mentioned she was struggling with her sewing machine when she was finishing up a bag um, if your uh, bag has a flap at the top or some form of bag where you need to sew the top edge of the bag the exterior and the lining right sides together those layers can kind of get on the thick side when you're adding all of the fabric and interfacing together and she mentioned she was getting a bit of um, her sewing machine slipping off the edge of the fabric and perhaps not catching both the lining and the exterior fabrics and leaving an occasional gap or a hole. And so I wanted to show you, um, I've heard of the people using this method in the past, but I've not tried it myself before today, but this method is for using staples to hold the layers of your fabric before you get them under the sewing machine. So I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you my little prepared sample and how I use staples for this. Okay, so before the show, I prepared an exterior bag. So this is a, a bag on the simple side. So I've got my exterior fabric attached to uh, foam interfacing and I sewed the sides and the bottom and I did the same thing for my lining fabric. Um, the lining's attached to ShapeFlex interfacing. So I turned my exterior fabric right side facing out and I'm going to go ahead and slip it inside my lining so that the fabrics are right sides together. So in the past I, I've used wonder clips for this particular aspect of bag making, basically finishing the bag up. So what you can do is either add tons of wonder clips and hope that they kind of hold in place while your sewing machine is getting through sewing the top area of the bag right sides together. I found that worked for me pretty well in the past, but I also, like Beverly, have noticed I've gotten some slippage, slippage of my own. This method will also work for if you're sewing your um, exterior side panel to the front and back of your bag, you can do the same thing with the staples here. So if you're finding the wonder clips are not holding fast for you and kind of slipping in place, you can use some staples. So I put a few on the back side over here before the show, and I'm gonna actually staple some live on camera. So I'm, for sewing my bag together along the top edge of the bag, I'm gonna be using half inch seam allowance. So you wanna make sure that your staples fall within the seam allowance. I've marked it here just for the demonstration portion of this show, but you can mark it on your fabric as well if you feel more comfortable. So this is that half inch seam allowance, allowance which means I will be sewing on top of the line because that's the half inch. So you wanna keep your staples a little bit above the halfway point 
um, because we want to keep it away from the needle certainly you don't want to be sewing over any staples um, but I'm just going to go ahead and take this is just a regular stapler and you can staple the staples as close as you feel that you need them so if you want to staple them every half inch or whatever you feel comfortable with is totally fine and this helps a little bit better than wonder clips because the staples obviously are not going to shift okay so I'm gonna flip this over you can see the staples right there I prepared this little portion before the show as you can see I've got the staples over here I've got my stitches right over here on the line and so in theory you'll be sewing around the entire outer edge of the bag I don't have my sewing machine up on the counter for the live shows but after you've stitched all the way around the bag you're just going to cut the seam allowance approximately in half so in theory you'll be removing those zippers so it's a good um, habit to if you're using a half inch seam for finishing up your bag to trim the seam allowance in half to so to about a quarter of an inch anyway so when you're trimming those seam allowances in half you'll be removing those staples so the staples will not be left in the finished bag and then you'll have uh, a nice finished top edge of the bag without any gaps because the staples held everything in place so hopefully that makes sense obviously this is a very simplistic um, bag I didn't want to go ahead and sew an entire um, Polaris bag or anything like that but I, th I think you get the idea with the staples and again they're easily removable you don't even have to remove them with a staple remover like I just showed you just cut them out by trimming the seam allowance in half and as long as you have place the staples um, so that you can do that so not too close to the seam allowance then it'll be really quick and easy and this is great for other areas of the bags like I mentioned for example when you're sewing your side panel especially if it's a curved side panel to the front and back of your bag sometimes that curved area even with the wonder clips tends to kind of slip away for, from you or the fabrics kind of uh, are not aligned as they should be so the staples would definitely help with that so thank you so much for to Beverly for asking that question so okay so so far we talked about continuous sewing we talked about basting we talked about staples so the fourth method that I want to discuss today is sewing with um, drawing the lines out first and then sewing directly on top of your line so Danny's gonna switch me back over to the overhead camera and Shinova told me about these seam allowance marking discs. I got these on Etsy. Um, I'm sure other places make an iteration of these as well. And as you can see, these are all the different um, seam allowances that you might need to use. So since I'm working with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the quarter inch disc off here. And so what you do, there's a, a little hole in the middle and I'm just going to mark on the wrong side of the fabric with my marking tool um, the seam allowance. I, I started marking one half over here. If you have any straight edges, it might be a good idea to kind of butt your ruler up against one end just to kind of uh, serve as a guide. But obviously, once you get into the, the curves, you're sort of relying on... Um, keeping this moving through the curve. So this is a really great way of getting the seam allowance marked. And then I'm going to uh, pin this to my exterior fabric and take it over to the sewing machine and um, sew right on top of the marks that I made. So one thing that might be helpful, I know certainly for my particular sewing machine, the, the sewing machine light is um, a little bit dim, but um, if you have access to sort of like a desk lamp or I know they make a lot of uh, different sewing lamps with an adjustable arm that you can kind of tilt to your, toward your machine. Having some extra light might be helpful so you, that you can um, see that your lines, obviously using a darker ink uh, or a contrasting ink will be helpful as well. Um, I'm just gonna pop over to the sewing machine again and uh, kind of, I'll start over here and I'll stitch through uh, some of the lines that I made. Okay, so again, if you can, best you can, sew slowly and try to stay on the line. I find that maybe this is just personal preference. The more I start and stop, 
unless it's absolutely necessary that sometimes gives me not as clean of a of a stitch line I know sometimes it can't be helped um, but I think I did yeah I did pretty good staying on top of the line especially through the curve which is um, the important place here the next method is so Danny's gonna switch back to the front camera um, I was speaking with Nicole earlier today and if you're a member of our Facebook group um, you've probably seen some of Nicole's um, latest projects. She made a few amethyst project bags with some binding around the outer edges. Um, it's not in the pattern, but I really like the pop of color that that binding gives uh, to the outside of the bag. But Nicole was telling me earlier today that when she sews a curve, um, she doesn't actually stitch a curve. She just sews straight lines. And I was like, what do you mean? So Danny switched back to the, the overhead camera. So Nicole made me a little drawing. By the way, I've linked to Nicole's uh, Instagram in the description of the show if you wanna check out the projects that she's been working on. So she made me a little drawing and it looked like this. And I was like, wait a second. So you're not, so you're never sewing a curve? And she's like, well, you know, most of the time, no. And I was like, well, I heard what she was saying, but would it work? So I, I, I made up a bunch of samples with just uh, foam interfacing and I just sewed them together because I was like, well, I don't know, like it just sort of seems like it's not going to work. So this is one of the early samples that I made and I was like, well, yeah, I mean, I sewed a straight line, but it doesn't look like I sewed a straight line. So if you look at this uh, flap that I made earlier, um, try to guess which side left or right is uh, the curved sewing and try to guess which side is the straight sewing. Danny, what do you think? Which side, right or left? Right is the straight, I'm guessing. Why do you think that? Does it look straight to you or are you just... No, I can see the left side a little like um, when you do curves, I, uh -huh. I see like little angles. It's not like a smooth curve. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty darn close. Like I have to say, this is the curved sewing on the side. I think so. Yeah, I wrote it down ah, on the other side. I was right. And that's the the straight edge. So um, let's let's talk a, a minute um, how we can accomplish this. And I definitely recommend, um, like what I did, make a few test scraps to practice first before you actually start working on your bag, just to get comfortable with it. See if you need to make any adjustments. And I will say, if you're taking your turning tool like this and doing the straight sewing and pushing the corners out. I think the, the straight edge will be a little more apparent. I recommend using your fingers and then just going inside and pushing that corner out instead with your fingers rather than a turning tool because I think a turning tool is gonna get more, uh, less of the curve, show less of the curve, um, if you will. So let me pull out my uh, fabric sample again. And this is just a pattern piece from something I'm working on right now. I just wanted something uh, with a curved edge. Let me flip this over. Actually, okay, um, so let's pretend we're working with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then I'll also discuss um, a half inch. So I'll do, just for drawing purposes, um, okay, I'll just draw a quarter of an inch over here. I'll show a half inch on the other side. Uh, okay, so the straight edges, I'm gonna start by drawing uh, the two straight lines quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'll do the same thing on this side. And then what I'm gonna do with my pattern piece is I'm actually going to fold it directly in half so that the, the two straight edges meet, just like this. And, oh, let me flip it back over. I'm going to align it with my fabric and then I'm just gonna fold it in half just so I can get sort of a, I think this is called a 45 degree angle. I want it basically directly down the center of where the curved edge is over here. So I'm gonna take my quilting ruler and I'm going to place it so that one of the straight lines on the ruler is even with this line that I drew. And I'm going to place the ruler three eighths of an inch down rather than a quarter. So I have to say when I was kind of playing around with making these little samples, at first I kind of made a line 
using the same seam allowance, a quarter of an inch, and it kind of made the the sewn corner like too pokey. It wasn't like curved enough. It was sort of more like a little poked edge over there. So um, using the same seam allowance, I found at least, didn't work so well for me. So I'm gonna draw this straight across. The reason that we're drawing this, this uh, 45 degree angle line over here is because otherwise you kind of don't know what angle to place the ruler. So the line really helps you and sets you up so that you just place um, one of these straight edges, like the seven inch edge on the line and you can just kind of shift it up like that. So I'm gonna draw the same thing on the other side. Again, I'm gonna take the pattern piece, place it even with the fabric, <laughs> and then fold it back along the line that I had already pre-folded. I'm just gonna draw a line straight like that. Okay, again, I'm gonna take my ruler and place it 3 eighths of an inch down from the edge of the fabric and then just draw the line straight across. So that's what to do if you're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you're using a half inch seam allowance, which I'll draw on this side of the fabric, it's just gonna be a little different. So instead you're just gonna draw your lines on the straight edges using a half an inch. And then instead of 3 eighths, you can use uh, 5 eighths of an inch uh, instead. So steps are pretty similar. There we go. We're just going to place this uh, a little bit further down. Okay, so that was a half an inch. Let's flip back over to the other side where I drew all of the lines. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my piece of foam interfacing with the fabric attached to it, and I'm gonna place these two right sides together. And I'm going to pin these in place using wonder clips and we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. So a couple of things I wanted to mention while I still have this on the overhead camera. You want to come down exactly on the lines. Um, maybe you've heard me before when assembling a zipper pocket. Um, if you're sewing along and it looks like your needle is not going to come down exactly on this corner over here. Let me draw this in black. This dot right over here is what I'm talking about. So like sometimes when you're sewing, your needle is either too early or too late. You really want it to come down exactly, and same thing over here, exactly. So what I do um, when stitching a zipper pocket, if it's not, if, if I can see the needle is not gonna come down exactly, then I'll decrease the stitch length maybe down to one millimeter or one and a half millimeter to ensure that it comes down exactly, and then I'll turn it back to my regular stitch length. Um, same thing for all four corners and sometimes I don't realize that it's not going to come down exactly until I have my needle down and I start to kind of pivot the fabric and then I can see like oh you know I kind of I'm a little too early um, so I'll, I'll, I'll go back and uh, redo it so it comes down exactly so that part's kind of important to get more of an even um, curve in the corner so I'm going to jump over to the sewing machine and uh, sew this one on camera And since you have the lines drawn, it's, it's really nice to get started. Just sew on top of the line. And I'm approaching that corner. It looks like I need to reduce my stitch length, which I will. And then once you kind of pivot it, um, actually I'm gonna try for one more stitch there. Once you pivot it, it's more clear if you've come down exactly or not, which I can see better. I mean, sometimes you do come down exactly, which I did over here, sometimes you don't. So you just have to wait and see, I guess. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this right side out. And then I'll switch over back to the overhead camera, Danny. Thank you. Okay, so this is what it looks like um, when it's turned right side out. If you notice one of the corners looks not as rounded as you'd like it to be, what I, what I just did is I just kind of took my fingernail and kind of nudged it in 
and then when you press it, um, then it will have a nicer curve. So um, this is just sewing for the exterior and the lining right sides together. I, however, I was really curious what would happen when you add a zipper because oftentimes we're, such as the Creative Maker supply case, sometimes there's a zipper involved. So I was like, well, how does that work with sewing that straight edge across a zipper? So um, I have here, I've already attached the zipper to the exterior fabric. I've got a double pull zipper over here. Let me quickly mark up my fabric. I suppose I should have gotten this one marked previously, but uh, neglected to do so. So I thought this was a pretty interesting technique and uh, honestly, hearing about it and seeing that little drawing, like I, I really did not think it was going to work. Um, this certainly is something great to try. Like I mentioned, give it a, a practice with some scraps first, but I thought it was um, a really nice way to take some of the, the stress out of sewing through curves, especially as I'm going to show in just a minute uh, once we add that zipper in there sometimes the stakes get a little bit higher. So let me finish marking up this lining piece. And it's almost kind of like a little parlor trick, like sewing with the straight lines, but getting a curved finish. So I've got my piece marked up already and I'm gonna go ahead and I before the show, I kind of stitched across the ends, as you can see with the white thread, just to make sure my zipper heads were not gonna come off. So it's always easier to pin and sew with just half of the zipper tape to deal with, so I'm gonna move that out of the way. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pin this in place. I'm gonna start with the corners over there. So the important thing to keep in mind when, when you've got the zipper in play now is to make sure while you're sewing that the zipper tape and the teeth especially are pushed out of the way. So having a couple wonder clips on that corner, I can feel the teeth right there. Just make sure it's pushed out of the way and you'll be completely fine. Okay, so let me get a couple other wonder clips over there. So let me take this back over to the sewing machine and I'll sew through at least one of the corners um, on camera. Okay, so I'm just kind of moving with my fingers because I can feel the zipper teeth. And again, just as before, we want to come down uh, right in that corner. And if you need to kind of adjust things a little bit, you can do that. Okay, so I'll stop there just so I can show you what the, the piece looks like. Okay, so here's the edge that I just sewed over here. Let me pull some of the wonder clips off. Oh, Laura had a question. Um, trimming the corners. There, as you can see, I've got a pretty good curved edge over here and I have another little sample over here so you can see it without the, the extra color. If Laura had a good question about um, trimming the corner, so here's my piece. Actually, I marked this in black pen so you can see um, where I stitched pretty well. If you would like to trim the corners, I feel like with the zipper, some people are not into trimming the zipper tape. So if you'd like to, you can just go ahead and kind of put some little clips in the fabric. Notches even, which would be cutting a V. Let me flip one of my, let me pull out one of my other samples over here. I just sewed through that as a curve. Okay, here's, here's the one corner that I sewed straight across. Let's 
So I'm cutting little V's here, and even since there's a bit of extra fabric, you can even do some more trimming. Good question, Laura. That'll help remove some of the bulk um, in that curved edge as well. Okay, so a couple more things that I wanted to talk about. Maureen had, in as part of her question, top stitching. And for top stitching, she already mentioned she drew the line ahead of time. Um, I think that's a good idea also. Um, I guess pretty similar to how I normally sew the curves, just try to sew slowly. If you need to, switch to a thinner foot. Um, sew slowly and do your best uh, to keep it going. So I'm gonna pop this back over to the, um, the sewing machine uh, just to demonstrate sewing, doing the top stitching. So I'm gonna turn my stitch length a little bit higher than my regular stitch length, so three millimeters for top stitching. Just try to keep uh, the presser foot moving if you possibly can. Um, one thing that I wanted to show as well is if you do need to start and stop while you're top stitching, um, make sure you adjust the position of your needle. So we're going to play a video right now um, what to do to prevent skip stitches, and this will apply to top stitching as well. Um, sometimes you'll notice um, You'll have regular stitches and then you'll have like one long one in the middle. Um, this is caused from your needle needing to be picked up a little bit, so I'll discuss that um, in this next clip. All right, so my demonstration for this week is something that's sort of a Simple demonstration, something really quick to demonstrate, but um, I thought it would be really helpful in just about every bag making circumstance. So I'm going to pull out a couple bags um, just to show you, sort of preview what I'm going to talk about. So in this chickadee backpack, the strap, or um, if your bag has strap tabs, um, as you probably know, you're sewing this down using a little square, sometimes a little rectangle. And then I've pulled out another bag. While strap tabs are the most frequent occurrence for this particular um, annoyance, it also can happen for the bottom of your bag as well. So these tabs are rounded um, and secure to the front of the bag. And this problem can also exist for bag bottoms, such as either a curved bottom or a bottom that's a rectangle. So, now that we've I've shown you a couple of bags, um, Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera because I prepared a little sample before the show. Okay, so sewing corners or sewing bottoms of bags or strap tabs. So I prepared this little demonstration. This is just foam interfacing, and I've used black thread so you can see it clearly. And as you can see, I had to sort of fool around with my little sample before I was able to get um, my... Um, little annoyance over here. So as you can see, when you're sewing corners, either straight corners or curved corners, you're generally pivoting with your needle. So I sewed a few, everything was fine. And then over here, if you take a look at this one, let me grab my pen. As you can see, the thread kind of cut off the corner, which is not what you want, especially when you're top stitching straps or tabs like I was showing um, before I pulled out this sample. So. Um, how to avoid this this little skip stitch in the corner. So I'm going to move over to my sewing machine so we can talk about this a little bit before I demonstrate it on my machine. So <clears throat> I've linked to in the description a little cartoon illustration of um, basically how a sewing machine works explained in a GIF. So if you're interested in checking that out, it's literally like a two second long illustration. And basically it illustrates how a sewing machine works when your needle is going up and down um, and grabbing the bobbin thread. So um, I'm gonna pull my bobbin casing out. Your bobbin casing might either be in the side of your machine or you might have like a, a little door. So video. Oh, that was the video? Oh, okay, yeah. well that was certainly short. Um, I do have one additional um, thing to mention as far as sewing through the curves. 
um, which I won't demonstrate tonight, but I do have it linked to a previous video that we filmed, um, how to clip and sew through curves. Um, in this particular video, I'm sewing um, a side panel through a curved edge on a bag. And if you're interested in that video, um, I've linked to that in the description in case you're interested in checking out that after the show. Um, a point that I make in that particular video is sometimes when you're sewing a side panel on, the exterior seems to fit almost exactly, but when you go to sew the lining on, it seems like it's the wrong size, even though everything's been cut to the same size. So um, I address that um, issue in this particular video as well. And I've linked to that in the description. So um, I hope you've enjoyed that um, little deep dive into um, sewing through curves and um, let me know um, if you enjoyed that uh, straight edge uh, curved section and um, I hope you do give it a try with uh, some of your scraps or maybe some of your scraps of interfacing. I know we all have tons of scraps of interfacing. I think um, this would be a great use for um, taking a, cup, a couple little scraps and uh, giving it a try um, next time you're in your sewing room. So um, I think Danny mentioned there were just a couple of questions uh, regarding that demonstration. Oh, thank you so much, Maureen. Maureen says, thank you for tackling my bag lab suggestion. Um, D says, can you use a glue to sew a flat piece to a curved piece? What kind of glue would you recommend? I actually haven't uh, attempted that yet, but it uh, gives me a th thought for uh, a future demonstration. I'll write myself a little note about that. If you have uh, tried to use glue or a basting glue um, to um, apply it to your fabrics before stitching, let me know in the comments. Danny will try to look out for that and put it up on the screen. Missy says, Sarah and Danny, I just want to say that I really appreciate your attention to detail in your lighting and camera work. Sarah's tutorials are my favorite because the camera angles always provide a clear view. Well, I really appreciate that, Missy, and I have to say um, none of that is my work. That's all um, thanks to Danny and his uh, research, and he's always adjusting things even before we went live tonight uh, on the sewing machine I was like well you know the the presser foot is causing a little bit of a shadow there so we were trying to adjust it before the show and I know tiny little things like that are things not not most people would notice but Danny's like no Danny needs to see like the fabric in the shot and the fabric in the overhead and on the sewing machine and he's always comparing so he really spends a lot of time um, on the camera and lighting for our videos Ella says, Sarah, where do you look when you are top stitching at the edge of the fabric, the needle, or the or the fabric lines up along the plate? That's a really good question. I am usually looking. I'm usually looking at the side of my sewing machine foot and the edge of the fabric. I feel like when I've tried to look at the etchings on the, the plate of the machine in the past, it's caused me to have uneven either stitching or top stitching through the curve because obviously uh, the etching on the plate is straight and as you're sewing the curve, the fabric kind of changes and it looks different. So I, me personally, I have a hard time looking at the etching on uh, the sewing machine. I try to look at my foot position in regards to the fabric and maybe that's just my comfort level with the the fabric and the presser foot over time i'm not really sure what that what that's about but um yeah that's what i usually look at um windless original says i use school based glue and heat to base both liquid and glue sticks works really well thank you so much for that um, follow-up comment to the question and kathy says um, the glues I use are Eileen's Fabric Glue and Beacon 3-in-1. Yeah, Beacon 3-in-1 is a really great glue. Um, I've used Eileen's Fabric Glue in the past, um, but it's been, it's been a while. Um, is that it on the questions for the demo? Um, thank you so much for um, your feedback and the questions during the demonstration. Um, I don't know if there were any other questions, uh, other related questions. <laughs> That's my dad. My dad says, very blessed to have a very talented daughter. Happy birthday, love, dad. <laughs> Thanks, dad. Um, all right, so um, without further ado, we'll get over to the giveaway for tonight. So I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. The winner of last week's giveaway was Stitched Dragonfly. So congratulations to you, Stitched Dragonfly. 
please email me after the show. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Danny's going to put my uh, email up on the screen right now. Uh, please email me after the show so that, that I can get you connected with your prize. And as always, if you have a question for me, whether you're working on one of my patterns and you need a little bit of help or you just have a general question, you can always email me. Um, again, that's sarah at sosweetness.com. So the giveaway prize for tonight is a Kismet Trinket Box video and pattern and a packet of Soft and Stable. If you are the winner and you already own that pattern and video, I'm happy to swap out for a different one. Um, I've made a ton of these. I think this particular pattern ties for the most multiples I've made of a pattern between this one and the Creative Maker Supply Case. Uh, Danny prepared a little carousel of some of your makes of this particular pattern. It comes in both a rectangular version and a circle version. So Cher made these with, as you can see, she styled them with some Bath and Body products. I really love the scallop fabric that she chose for hers. Uh, here's another one that she made with uh, storage for Legos for a small child. I really love how this one turned out also. Um, I made this one for a friend a few years ago for a Christmas gift in a textured vinyl. I do not recall where I got it from, but it was probably oh, maybe five or six years ago. Alyssa made this denim version and she hand embroidered Craft a Happy Life on the front and she used um, some patchwork for her lining, which I thought was really clever. Um, Angelina made this version with, she added the, the sleeve on the front for storage for pens and scissors. Uh, Beth just finished this one. I think it was today posted in the Facebook group uh, for Christmas gifts. I love those little gingerbread poles. I mean, they're super adorable, go perfectly with the fabric. Hannah made a whole bunch. As you can see, this is a great one to make for gifts. Um, love the watermelon one, the toucan one. Iris made one, but taller for, I think this was for her husband uh, to take to work. I thought that was really clever and super simple to just extend it and make it taller. Michelle made one with sewing machine themed fabric. She's got a little cork handle on the top and she's got a ribbon that she used for a zipper pull. So adorable. I love this one that Pigs in Pajamas made. She added a sleeve on the lid for scissors and um, some needles. Um, Tammy made this, as you can see, Tammy made uh, small, medium and large in the rectangular version. Um, and styled with a vintage sewing machine. Uh, I think that was a lamp. Um, Teresa made cathedral windows. Cathedral windows, I super love them, um, but I, I like the different colors and the fabrics that she chose for her projects. Um, even though the Kismet Trinket boxes comes with three different sizes for each version, both the, the circular, the round ones, and the rectangular ones, as with a lot of different projects, or at least in my personal opinion, the biggest size is always the easiest generally. And so um, if you've not made this pattern before but would like to give it a shot, I'd recommend starting with the biggest size and work your way down. But the, the big size is pretty small nonetheless. Um, but uh, holidays are coming and um, I've made lots of these in the past for gifts and they were always well received because whether you need storage at your desk or in your suitcase when traveling. I think um, they're just like a nice little item to have in there. Uh, Terry says, which pattern is this please? Um, I don't think I linked to this in the description. I'll add it after the show. It's the Kismet Trinket Boxes. Um, as soon as we uh, tune out for the night, I'll add the link to the Kismet Trinket Boxes in the description because I feel like I forgot to do that. Um, but I'll certainly add that um, so you can check that pattern out if you're interested in it. So. Um, I have our, our giveaways are all randomly drawn out of all the comments left on the show, show from uh, YouTube and Facebook. Those are all added together. Um, you have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show to be counted for the giveaway and I'll announce the winner on next Sunday's show. And I have a question for you as an extra method that you can um, enter in the comments right now. Um, what's the item that you've sewn most often? So. Um, like I mentioned uh, previously, I've sewn a lot of Kismet Trinket boxes and Creative Maker supply cases. Um, perhaps you have something that you've sewn a lot, perhaps uh, a particular quilt pattern or um, a t-shirt that you've sewn a lot. Let me know in the comments uh, an item that you've sewn most often. 
Um, thank you so much for joining me for the show. I really appreciate it. I was really looking forward to the demonstration tonight. Um, I hope you had a great time watching and I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody. Thank you.